What's up everyone? Welcome to the Running Secrets YouTube channel. My name is Jason. The video you're about to watch is a recording from our Facebook live session we had January 21st, 2021. It was all about lactic threshold. In our Facebook group we do this thing called Q&A Thursdays where every Thursday I go live and we talk about questions that you guys have. So if you are not a member of that group, scroll down to the description below. Find the link, join the group. It is 100% awesome, 100% free. It is for everyone. It doesn't matter if you're fast, you're slow, you're old, you're young. Join this group. The more people we have in it, the more fun we're gonna have. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to the Running Secrets channel so you get notified anytime that I post a new video. Enjoy the video. What's up everyone? Happy Thursday. It is Q&A Thursday. I am super excited to be here with you guys today. It is January 21st. It is in the middle of the afternoon, so I don't know who will actually hop on this just because we're all working folk, aren't we? Um, most of us are anyways. But today is actually, so Thursdays are my half day, so I only work Thursday mornings. So I'm like, all right, instead of doing eight o'clock tonight, let's try two in the afternoon since Paisley has started uh, gymnastics at in the evenings. So that kind of makes the evening a little bit busy and chaotic um so if you're watching this live well so i'm just going crazy so if you're watching this live put hashtag live in the comments if you're watching this on replay put hashtag replay uh hopefully as many of you guys will be able to watch this as possible um so i don't know how many will actually hop on here so i'm just gonna dive in so today's q a thursday last thursday um ali in the group uh asked us how to how, how to base how to calculate lactic threshold um, which is a great question, and I wanted to save it for another day just because there's a lot that can go into it. So I wanted to save it for today. Um, but if you watched last week, last week we talked all about heart rate and how it relates to running and nutrition and, and so on and so forth. Um, today is kind of another step beyond that, um, but we're going to <laughs> – <laughs> Nellie says, wowie, what a hottie. Thanks, baby. Um, but, yeah, so let's talk about lactic threshold. So let me pull up my PowerPoint because I am so professional today. Um, all right, here we go. All right, can you guys see that? Can everyone hear me okay? I have a few people hopping on. If you're here, say hello. Let me know who's here. All right, so let me pull over my PowerPoint a little bit. So last week we, we had that question about lactic threshold. So let's talk about what exactly lactic threshold is. So there's some members in this group that will be like, all right, that's – Easy, why are we even talking about this? Um, there's other members who may not know what lactic threshold is, so that's why we're gonna talk about it so we're all on the same level. Um, so why do we worry about lactic threshold? So a lot of times we hear runners talking about, you know, we gotta get my lactic threshold, I gotta do tempo, I gotta you know, make sure I hit this pace. Well, here's why we worry about it. So lactic threshold is one of the major factors in, in determining how quickly you can run a specific distance. That's true for 5Ks, that's true for marathons, and everywhere in between. Um, your lactic threshold is a great indicator of where you are fitness-wise. Let me look over here. You guys can see that? All right. Just want to make sure you guys actually read the word since I don't have it blown up. Um, so what exactly is lactic? So the definition of lactic, lactate, is it is a chemical byproduct of anaerobic respiration, which is the process by which cells produce energy without oxygen around them. So if you didn't already know, our body needs oxygen to function, obviously. And when we run, we're using a lot more oxygen than we're not running. Pretty pretty straightforward. Jill says here, awesome, hey Jill. Um, so that is what lactic is. lactate is. Man, can't even speak today. Um, so lactate, so like I said, it's a byproduct of one of the energy producing systems in the body. Um, there's a few different ways that we produce energy in our body. I'm not gonna get into all that because I don't think anyone here wants a biochemistry lesson. And to be honest, I don't know if I can remember all the individual steps. <laughs> We're not gonna do that anyway. Um, but just know that there's a few different ways to, to create energy or to use energy because we create energy is not created nor destroyed. It's just transferred. But anyways, um, so at rest or at low to moderate intensities of exercise, the lactate is cleared within the muscle. So today, when you hear me talk about lactate clearing, or if you read something that says lactate clearing, think of that as uh, used for energy. So in other words, lactate is used for energy within the muscle. Okay, everybody good with that? Uh, so think of lactate as a recycled source of fuel. So in our body, um, or as we run, 
Uh, we breathe in oxygen and we start this energy system process. The lactate continues to accumulate in the muscles, but our muscles try to use it again as a fuel source like recycling. Um, and this is through what's called oxidation, meaning oxygen molecules are used in this process. And this process continues through our whole run. Kind of cool, right? Our body tries to keep this process contained within the muscles, but when it can't keep up, it spills into the bloodstream. So when the intramuscular lactic threshold is breached, meaning that threshold within the muscles is breached, um, some lactate exits the muscle and enters the circulatory system or the blood and thus increases blood lactate levels. This is representative of the lactic threshold, AKA blood lactate. So let me put that in easier terms. So we're running, we're running at a given pace. Our body goes through this energy system. We try and create energy to keep us moving. Um, if we are either out of shape or we're going too hard, we can't keep up with that clearing, meaning we can't keep up with that recycling process. And so when we can't keep up, that lactate leaves the muscle and goes into the bloodstream. And that's where we get blood lactate, okay? Easy peasy, right? Um, all right. All right, so how do we know what that threshold is? So obviously the best way is to do it in the lab. Uh, so when you do it in the lab, it's kind of like when you do a VO2 max test where you hook up all the things and you know you get measured. So with blood lactate, you either get on a treadmill or you get on a stationary bike and you ride for a given amount of time and in, in specific intervals, your speed or resistance will increase. And periodically your fingers will be pricked and your blood will be tested. And eventually you'll be able to figure out where exactly your blood lactate threshold is. Um, Cause there'll be an increase in, in lactate in your blood. Um, so for the rest of us, because we can't all go to a lab to do this, we can use heart rate data, which is kind of cool. But remember, this is only an estimation. I repeat, this is only an estimation. Hold the phone. If you guys are still watching this video, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Smash that like button. Adam, say hi. Hi. <laughs> Adam says hi. Hope you guys are enjoying the video. Estimation, just like heart rate data, is only an estimation of what is actually going on. We talked a little bit about last week of chest strap versus wrist strap. Um, I had a follow-up post talking about that where chest straps are a little bit more accurate than wrist straps or wrist bands, I guess. So just an estimation. Um, all right, so a good estimation of your lactic threshold pace is the average pace of your half marathon personal best time. So that is a good starting point. And I put big asterisks there because it's exactly that. It's a good starting point. If you ran you know, a one, one ten half 10 years ago and you haven't run 130 or faster since then, your lactic threshold will probably be a little bit different. Just like if you've never run a half marathon before, you probably aren't completely sure what your lactic threshold even is. So research tells us that for most runners, their lactic threshold occurs around 80 to 90% of your maximum heart rate. Now these percentages kind of differ depending on what book you read. So if I've seen values anywhere from you know, 75% to about 90%. I've seen this 80 to 90. I've heard a good rule of thumb that says if just stick to about 80%. Um, you know, there's, there's all kinds of values there. So for today, we're just going to talk about 80 to 90% of your max heart rate. And Stacy's here. Hey, Stacy. Um, so that's let, let's keep that in mind. So last week, we also talked about how to figure out your maximum heart rate. So the old way. You do 220 minus your age, and that's your max heart rate. Um, but that's not exactly ideal if you're either really young or not so young. It's kind of only good if you're like in the 30 to 40 year old age bracket. Um, so there's a little bit better way to do it. Um, so research has suggested that this is the way to do it. So you take um, your age times 0.7, get that value, and then do 208 minus that number. So here's what it looks like. So for me, I turned 30 last year, 30 years old. Uh, um, so you do 0.7 times 30 and take that value and do 208 minus that value, which comes out to be about 187 as my suggested maximum heart rate. And Patrick's here, hey Patrick. Um, so yeah, so that's what the formula spits out for me. So 80 to 90% of my max heart rate would be about 150 to 168 beats per minute. Pretty, pretty realistic, I think. Um, I mean, I don't wear a chest strap all the time, but I do know when I'm working hard, that's usually where my heart rate's sitting at. I know on race day, it's usually a little bit higher, um, but that's 
pretty good, accurate value of kind of what I've been doing. So I challenge you guys to do this. So take your own age and, and figure this out. You don't have to do it in the comments, but maybe in your, your free time, figure this out because this is gonna help you determine what exactly your lactic threshold pace is. One of the ways to figure it out. Um, so for me, my like I said, my heart rate would be, between, yeah, for me, my lactic threshold heart rate, heart rate wise is 150 to 168 beats per minute. And that's likely where I would find my lactic threshold. Um, so next, let's determine how we figure out the pace. So what exactly is lactic threshold pace? Um, I know I'm spitting this out super fast at you guys, but I don't want to make this a long video and bore you guys to death. Um, again, if you're watching this live, put hashtag live. If you're watching replay, hashtag replay, okay? Um, so lactic threshold pace. So again, there's some different definitions, but today we're going to stick with this. So this is the pace that you, that you can maintain for 50 to 60 minutes in a race. Um, so depending on how experienced you are as a runner, this pace can vary a little bit. Um, your current fitness will also help determine this as well. So for example, um, if you run pretty regularly for five to six months, you know, your, your lactic threshold pace will continue to improve. Now, if you decide to take three months off and don't do anything, you know, if you try and do your lactic threshold after that three months, your lactic threshold is probably going to be a little bit, a little bit different. So think of it this way. Think of it in terms of gas mileage. Think of like a, a very well-maintained car versus a car that's not taken care of very well. The cars that are taken care of better run a little bit better as far as uh, gas mileage and efficiency. So your body's the same way. So if you're in good shape, your heart runs more efficiently and your body can take care of that lactic better too. Because remember, that lactic threshold is that level at which your body can't clear it anymore or use it as energy, okay? Um, there's also another famous coach, Jack Daniels. Um, he has a bunch of books that are, are very formula and math-minded. And he suggests that lactic threshold pace is 30 seconds per mile slower than your current 5K pace. Um, Patrick says, I just turned 50, my max heart is 171.80, doing a 5.30 pace. Nice, that's solid. Great job. Um, so I've, I've heard this this as well, that you know, you take your, your current 5K pace and add 30 seconds to it. Um, if you don't have a heart rate monitor and you don't either have the time or the ability to, to calculate things, that's probably a good, good ballpark area. Um, I'd be interested to see what the data says for that. If any of you have any data suggesting the 30 seconds, please let me know, because I'm very curious about all that. And Jill says, mine is 136, I'm 54. Nice, okay. Um, so let's keep going. All right, almost done here, and then I'll open it up for a couple questions if you're, if you're on. Um, so how do I increase my lactic threshold? And I, I think this is what Ali was asking last week. So sorry, Ali, I just went through an entire presentation to get to your question. Hope you don't mind. But I hope this has been helpful. So there's a couple different ways to increase your lactic threshold. One, obviously, is to increase mileage. Now, the key part of this is to increase your easy miles, not your hard miles. So if don't go add more hard workouts to your, to your weekly training plan. You know, add more easy miles, uh, more of a base, more aerobic training. Um, the other way is to add tempo or threshold runs into your weekly plan. So here's a few examples. These aren't the only ways to do it. These are just a few different kinds of, of workouts you can do to increase your lack of threshold. Um, so this, I wrote it up as if I would, I was writing a training plan for someone. Um, so if you were running with me and you saw this appear on your calendar, this this would be a lactic threshold day. So you do a one or two mile warm up. You could do four by one mile at 10k pace with about two minutes active recovery in between, and then a one mile cool down. Now with lactic intervals, lactic threshold intervals like this one, the key is you don't want to go all out. So it's not like an all-out sprint, like a 400-meter interval. Um, and the other key thing is the active recover, the short interval active recovery, that two-minute active recovery. Because if you're doing four by one mile at 10k pace, and you take five six minutes in between, you're you're not really getting that lactic threshold. You're gonna bring your heart rate up, you're raising that blood lactate, and then you're cooling back down, and then you have to start over again. Whereas if you're if you're having a shorter recovery interval, hey Sarah's here. Hey Sarah. Uh, if you're having a shorter active recovery interval, you're going to keep your heart rate up and it doesn't get a chance to drop back down. So this simulates like an actual race more than you know doing like a whole mile and then taking the five, six minute break and doing another one and taking another five, six minute break. Does that make sense? All right. So another example 
is a kind of a longer threshold run, or I like to call them tempo runs. Um, I do this, this is probably my bread and butter right here. So I'll do a one mile warm up and I'll do 30 minutes at 10K pace with a one mile cool down. So you can do this at kind of varying paces too, I guess. But the point is you want to run comfortably hard for 20 to 30 minutes. So when I was in high school, we would do a workout like this you know, all summer long and then in the first part of the season in the fall for cross country because this is going to increase that threshold. And when you increase that threshold, you're going to get faster because when your threshold improves, that means you could either run longer at that pace or you can run harder at that shorter distance, okay? And then the other, one other example is uh, kind of like a ladder workout. So you do a one mile warm up. You could do one mile at 10K pace, two miles at 10K pace, three miles at 10K pace, but have three or so minutes of active recovery in between each one of those. Um, so the purpose of all those, those, those exercises, those workouts are to increase your lactic threshold. Um, so yeah. Rebecca's here too. Hey, Rebecca. So I know that was a lot. I just kind of blah, all, all that out at you. Um, I hope that makes sense. If there's anything confusing, please let me know. There's a few of you still watching. Um, add your comments in the comment section. Um, thumbs up, thumbs down, questions, whatever. Um, so I'll hang on for another minute and see if there's anyone that has any questions. But.